Welcome to the channel everyone. My name is Ryan and this is RimWorld. RimWorld is an exciting colony builder and storytelling generator with incredible depth and endless replayability thanks in large part to its active modding community. Now, my last few RimWorld series had a high-tech and even science fiction theme, but today our story takes place in a world without electricity, without firearms, and without mechanoids. It takes place in a medieval world with strange animals, and exotic foliage that grows taller and denser than on normal worlds. There are also rare magic powers in this world and exceptional martial prowess. Our story begins with a father and his four sons. They have been banished because of their lack of faith in the prevailing ideology, and now they set out to establish a new home with a new center of worship. Our Lord is Randy Random, and our adventure will be one of blood and dust. Now, we go to meet our new colonists in the mysterious dark forest biome on mountainous but fertile terrain. And here we have the five members of Clan Boromar. Indo Boromar is its patriarch. At 37 years old, he is an industrious iron wheeled jogger with a double passion in shooting, but primarily a passion for crafting. He will also be the lead doctor of the colony, at least for now. And Bera is his oldest son. At 19 years old, Bera Boromar is a fast learner, sanguine sharpshooter. Now, the sharpshooter trait is brought to us by the Rim of Magic mod, which we'll talk about shortly. But he has a double passion in shooting. He's also our lead cook and backup doctor in training. He's also our number one social pawn with a double passion for the intellectual pursuits. His brother is Cage. At 18 years old, Cage is a bloodlust brawler and a quick sleeper. He's got a double passion for melee and a construction passion as well as a double passion for mining. So he really loves to punch those rocks. In addition, he is our number one animal handler. And that brings us to the twins, Ant and Beetle, who are identical nearly in every way. Their traits are the same. Both are pretty kind and super immune. And we see Ant here is going to be a good fighter one day. At 16, they're still fairly young, but he has a double passion for plants as well, and somewhat interest in social and intellectual too. But his brother Beetle was the truly gifted one in the plant skills, so he was born with a nine and a double passion in the planting but that leaves us with the full clan say hello to our colonists of course the mother is not in the picture she did not survive the birth of the twins unfortunately such is the reality though in medieval worlds where their medicine doesn't go much beyond the herbal level correct so this is our full group here and the first step as you can see will be to clear a path for us to build our first buildings and start our bur burgeoning colony the Rim of Magic mod. It is installed for this playthrough. And as a side note, I should mention the entire mod pack is linked down below. All you have to do is click on that. It will take you to the Steam page and you can easily download them all and play along with this exact same setup. Now, with that being said, Bera is the only colonist we have that benefits from the might or magic abilities that come with this mod. And in fact, I've gone into the mod options and I've turned down the rarity globally for the entire game so that when we do encounter a pawn with magic or might abilities, it will be that much more exciting and special. And hopefully one day we can reproduce our own 
a little fire mage or something like that. We'll see how that goes, of course. But for now, Barra is of the might category. And also another side note I'll mention is I'm not very familiar with this mod. This will be one of those that I'm just kind of trying out basically for the first time in this series. So bear with me. Leave me some tips down in the comment section below. You can see I've chosen Sharpshooter. I figured that was a good basic one to go with. We'll get to the more exotic stuff hopefully later down the road. But so he has, I think, no points available, nothing going on, no special. Oh, he does have a couple special abilities down here in his toolbar. So we'll have to read through these at some point before we get into combat, obviously. But for right now, we need to clear these trees a little bit and get our colony set up. Now, before we break ground on our first building, I think it is important that we pull back a little bit take a look at the map we'll be using for this series as you can see it is a mountainous map and there's an awful lot of stone here I'm betting that there's probably a hidden valley or two underneath some of this just because this mountain really dominates the map here in some areas but um, also you'll probably notice that the trees I've got are much larger and denser than you're probably used to. If you are unfamiliar with the Majestic Trees mod, of course it's included in this mod pack, but there is an extra step or two you have to do to make your trees look like this. So if you're unfamiliar with it and you do want to have this appearance, check the description below. I should have a link on a quick photo of just showing where exactly to look for those options. But anyway, you can see, I believe we also have an ancient danger here exposed, which might be very helpful to us at some point. But that's a good look. I believe our colonists are right here. This is going to be a nice little area that we can easily defend with some walls right here. It's awfully small, but of course with Cage's mining abilities, we should be able to open it up a little bit. Let's take a quick look at the fertility overlay. Oh yeah, we've got some really nice fertile soil here on this mountain, definitely. In fact, we've got a little starter patch right here in this area, so I think that definitely determines that we can get some rice going and easily defend this spot for sure. So this will be where we first decide to clear some trees over here and let's let the pawns get to work. Okay, and if you do decide to play with the Majestic Trees mod, down here in the bottom right, you will see that it actually gives you this ability to enable or disable tree transparency. So there are certain items that become extremely hard to see if you don't have this enabled. So if I click that on, you can see wherever I put my mouse, I can see behind some of the foliage there. And we discover that we have a stack of 500 timber to start this scenario with. We've also got a little pemmican somewhere or other. And, oh, a little bit of cloth to start with as well. Maybe for a recreation building or something. But this is going to be what we use to just get up a storage facility and somewhere we can sleep out of the weather it's not a lot we'll definitely need to process a bunch more but um, like i said it's a good start oh and as a side note we have a little bit of medicine if you do want to play with this scenario too just the way i've got it, it's pretty simple setup but there is a link to that scenario too. take you to the steam page well i think that this is a natural choice for our very first building, we can easily enclose this space right here with a, just a small amount of wood and we'll have enough room to store what little resources we have so far and lay out a few basic pieces of furniture. We'll slap down five sleeping spots and if we go to our production we'll probably need a crafting spot as well so we'll give our boys a little bit of time to get working on this while the twins cut down a bunch of trees the next step is probably going to be to lay out our small starter farm 
Well, as you can see, our first enclosure is complete. It's primitive, but the boys had, don't have to sleep in the rain. And Indo has stayed up late starting construction of some war masks to protect everybody's faces. Now, I have also got the blueprints for a passive cooler and a bonfire set up here, ready to go in case we have any drastic temperature shifts. But um, if we pop out to the world map real quick, we can take a look at some of the parameters for our growing season. All right, here we are, as you can see, right on the edge of the dark forest biome. We have a 30 days on, 30 days off growing season, so that's going to be very critical that we build up enough of a surplus to get through that hard winter. But um, you can see there's also no pollution here. The coordinates are here, but I've also got them down in the description, so you can choose this exact map and seed and everything. Play along if you'd like to. But uh, let's get back into the colony, wake the boys up because we've got a hard day of work ahead of us and the all-important entertainment and table of course is going in right now so thanks to cage and his construction ability even though he's only got a single passion he will probably end up being our primary constructor and you know what speaking of cage he is also our number one miner too Let's go out and find some steel or iron deposits. I'm not sure which one the medieval overhaul uses, but um, let's go find some. Oh, we've got some salt ore here. That's interesting. Maybe that'll help with our cooking recipes. Oh, this is even cooler. We've got some citrine deposit here. I believe this is a gem or a bit of citrine. Yeah, some sort of gem. Very nice. I wonder what we can craft up with that. Okay, well I have found some iron ore right here. Very nice. Looks like there's plenty of it, but it's also somewhat far from the entrance to our little hidden valley. So we'll just have to be careful. We don't want any raids to pop in and ambush Kage while he's standing out here. You know, I think if that's going to be the case, then I'll just have him do a little bit instead of mining out the whole vein we'll just take what we need and in fact that will help mitigate some of our colony wealth as well so we don't have to worry about as intense raids right off the bat and with that being the case i'm also probably not going to be mining the citrine ore or citrine deposit right away at least until we actually know what we can use it for all right, the hoopstone is up, boys. Quit complaining about recreation variety. You've got that, plus the game of Ur. What more do you need? Just get to work. Well, the pemmican will last for a long time if left undisturbed, but we don't have much of it, so the hungry guys are going to eat through this pretty quick, which means we need to get our cooking production up and running right away but as you can see it requires granite blocks now the timber we can get we've got a spot here set up and i've actually got some orders now to process this of course the war masks do take priority but we'll get to all of that the the stone is a bit more important though i assume we're going to need to probably build the stone cutting spot and should we place it indoors yeah to avoid any penalties we'll put it right here and behind the torch there that way it'll be nice and lit hopefully the guys can get some of that built real quick before they starve all right well unfortunately it turns out the stone cutting spot will only produce chunks so in order to get the blocks that we need i think we'll need to do some researching I'm going to go ahead and lock in stone stacking as our first option for research. And we're going to have to use the old researching spot, which isn't very quick, but it'll serve the purpose. Well, without the advanced knowledge of how to make stone blocks yet, we can always rely on a trusty campfire to craft up or cook up some pemmican. So that's what we'll be doing. But of course, we're going to need meat for that. Now, I believe that there's some wildlife just over here. Yes, we've got the rocks. Let's take a look at this and see if we can hunt it without being attacked. Nope. Looks like there's a 100% chance for it to attack when harmed. Okay, we're going to choose a different target. Well, looks like there isn't much to choose from here in the dark forest biome, 
but uh, this raccoon will definitely have to do and potentially the hare which is nice and close to the front of our dwelling area that one's a little too far away don't want to send people out on wild goose chases or wild hare chases so to speak okay well while one of the hunters goes and gets us some fresh raccoon meat looks like the garden is still not quite ready to produce the uh vegetation we'll need for our pemmican so let's go ahead and select our harvest tool and we will just drag this right across our home area wow there's a lot of different stuff to harvest and of course this does include things like heel root as well which we'll take but i will be happy to have an extra supply of that for sure you know it occurred to me that we might be able to get some of the granite we need for our cooking stove by disassembling some stone walls and i thoroughly searched the map but unfortunately none of these are made of granite so we'll still have to go about it the hard way but one thing i did notice is that we've got some interesting material right here elven wall this is made of elven timber decent little market value on this i'm probably going to claim this at some point deconstruct it and either build a special little maybe we'll make our ritual room out of this fancy looking material or we could just sell it off also not sure about these ruined chests that has been smashed open at once contain valuable items that are sadly long gone well looks like our raccoon meat has finally come in it is just laying right on the ground though in fact looks like bear is using some of it as a chair but uh, i think we can improve upon that if we come over to our storage tab i'm gonna grab a food basket and just make things much more efficient we'll place that right behind our cooking guy and i'll fill this obviously with meat and other berries and ingredients he'll need to make pemmican also as a side note i think i'm going to chop down these two trees right here in front of the door okay well it looks like little beetle is out here doing some of the hunting that's perfectly fine the kid's got to learn somehow some way right and i think a rabbit is good game for him to uh set his sights on now i should touch on the weapons that our five colonists have every one of them is wielding a very primitive short bow right now except for cage who has the steel ikiwa he is our only melee pawn and since they all do have fairly beefy traits and decent skill levels to start with i figured it would kind of balance things out if i just gave them some very crappy weapons to start so we're still looking forward to that first raid i hope the boys can handle it i have confidence they'll be able to take on the first couple no problem and this doesn't indicate that I have a lack of faith in the boys fighting prowess at all but we are going to lay down a couple of traps here at the corners of our little valley entrance so if any raiders want to come around these corners we might get lucky and stop a few of them before they actually get around there and of course it adds the benefit that it will remove this need defenses notification over here which is rather annoying okay well as is typical with randy random he throws traders at us before we literally have anything to trade with them but it'll be interesting to see what an arcane items collector actually has all right well with bear being our best trader let's just see what these guys have well looks like we do have a couple of hides we can trade away might as well oh and we dug some uranium out of the mountain just by coincidence might as well sell that too i think the silver will be more valuable to us right now than the uranium will be probably so let's just go through ah unrefined magicite another good one to get rid of maybe i'll regret that down the road but uh, for right now i have no idea how we even acquired it probably just through some random mining i assume but what have they got that might be interesting? Whoa, look at this Thrumbo. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's a good quality for 5,900 silver. Wow, we certainly don't have enough unrefined magicite for that. Oh, uh, well, unfortunately, after looking through everything very carefully, there isn't much we can afford except some random food items or a mana potion or two. But um, I almost 
we almost have enough for this male rhinoceros, but not quite, which would have been kind of fun. But um, no weapons either, so we'll just take the silver. I think that's a good trade, considering all things. Okay, well, this is where my inexperience with the medieval overhaul mod is definitely going to show, because we're getting a lot of interesting stuff here from butchering up these animals, and I have no idea what to do with them. Now, obviously the bones are probably for crafting. We've got the hair hides, and I've set up some of these drying racks and tanning racks now, so... Wow, yeah, yeah, there's a whole process for this, isn't there? Well, I'm going to, again, kind of stumble my way through things. Maybe, again, you guys have some comments, helpful tips down the road. I'm sure it'll all make sense as we go along. I'm certainly not willing to give up just yet, not when we're getting started. Oh, nice. This is exciting. We just got the notification that Barra has received a skill point here. Oh, he's got three points available. I must have missed a couple, or maybe they allocate him in sets of three. I don't know. Again, still very new to this particular mod, but let's see. Sniper training. That seems like an important one. Uh, oh, accuracy, aiming delay, movement is increased. Very nice. Put a point in that. Improved ammo. Ammo increases the velocity of rounds, resulting in greater likelihood of destroying a vital organ. Headshots gain 10% damage per skill. Stamina cost decreases stamina cost of headshot by 10%. So, that's interesting. We've got the different abilities. Now, my question is, can he use these right away? Looks like it. I can target. Interesting. Anti-armor Shadow Slayer. A trained sniper is an expert at stealth and positioning and knows the right time and place to strike. The Shadow Slayer Cloaking Field is a long duration form of invisibility. Unlike normal cloaking technology, this stealth field relies heavily on a form of predictive cloaking that rapidly wears off when the user performs rapid or violent actions, such as firing a weapon. So it won't last through an action. I like it though. Let's see here. Let's do what does the software upgrade do? Increases duration, feel by three seconds per skill level. Let's do it. Boom. Wow. All right. We got a lot of cool stuff to look forward to. And as I mentioned, he Barry is the only pawn we have with a talent of any kind for the magical or the might, but Hopefully we'll encounter some more. We're definitely looking for some wives for the boys here. And maybe Indo can find a new mother too for the boys. So maybe we can produce our own magical, magically gifted kids too. Okay, well, we have a bit of a problem. We've got four hungry boys here and very little meat. There's also very few animals on the map. And these rocks really are the biggest thing going so despite the fact that we've got the 100% chance for them to attack when they're harmed, we've got to take the risk. So you can see, although you probably can't see it because of the trees, that they are all asleep. This one's the closest to our group of hunters. I've got them very stealthily placed down here. Let's just see if we can pick one of these guys off without waking up the whole herd. Might not be possible, but I'm definitely going to give it a shot. What do we got? There he is. Oh, that's a boom rat. Um, hold on. No, let's move it a little closer. Let's not shoot the boom rat. Okay, here we go. Ooh. Oh, that's good, actually. Yeah, yeah, We just managed to trigger the one. I think the rest of them are either still asleep or they did not go manhunter, which is phenomenal. So we're going to utilize our run and gun mod. And we're going to pull our boys back a little bit as this rock approaches. It's very fast. Yep, we've got to be careful. We don't want any of our colonists to take a hit. Animal like this could probably rip off an arm. Some of those horns he's got on him. All right, let's check his health. Oh, nice. We did it. We've done it. We've got our first big kill. Let's see. So we should get roughly 370 meat off this. Wow, that's pretty good. Of course, it does depend on the abilities of the butcher, the quality of the workstation, things like that, cleanliness. But man, oh man, bear is all over it. Good job, guys. 
Well, you know, like we saw trying to pick those rocks out of the forest, the trees definitely present a challenge for visibility, but in a way I kind of enjoy that. I think it makes it more realistic for, in a sense, you don't just peer straight through a forest and see everything that's available there, but there are some ways around it. So I'm looking for some more berry bushes to go with our new rocks meat. And what I'm going to do is grab it and select similar to this. So instead of harvesting every single thing in sight, we're just going to go for any berry bushes, which might be near the entrance. There we go. It's quite a few. And I can just hit harvest on those. And obviously the twins will come out and do the work. Oh boy. Well, the hunter becomes the hunted. We've got a red fox going after ant. So let's grab Ant. Where's he at? I see him. He's uh, walking through the herd of rocks. And I've already lost the fox. <laughs> Tell you what, just to be safe, we're going to grab everybody with a bow and have them fall back to the colony area where we will face off against this maddened fox. Okay, there he goes. He's chasing our boy Ant. Ah, uh, the arrows are flying though. Don't stop, Ant. Don't stop, okay? Cage, you might have to get into this, buddy. Oh, nice. They turned him. They turned him. Let's keep it up. Keep it up. Cage, fall back. All right, don't stop shooting, guys. I want you to focus your short bows on the red fox. Go, go. Well, let's take a look at his health, actually. Dead in seven hours. I'm going to set him to be hunted by one of our guys, and I have confidence that with his injuries, they'll be able to take him out pretty easily. Okay, and Ant has safely downed the ferocious fox. Let's take a look at his shooting skill. Has it gone up a little bit? I think it might have. Hey, look at that. We've got a prompt to name our settlement. Awesome. Alrighty, well, of course, we have gone with Clan Boromar for our faction name, and I think I'd like the City of Avalon for our settlement's title. That's the mythical city that uh, King Arthur went to when he died, I believe, is as the legend says. But there we go. We have an official name for the colony. That's immense. Now, the only thing left to do is encounter our first raid and break in the place. But unfortunately, that will have to wait for the next episode, guys. I think this is probably a natural spot for us to end our very first episode of the brand new medieval playthrough. I hope you've enjoyed it so far. Let me know what you think down in the comments section. While you're there, hit that like button for me. Subscribe to the channel if if you haven't and just as a note on the upload schedule I'm going to try and do a little bit more editing and have things a little bit more refined for this RimWorld series as opposed to some of my older ones. So the upload schedule might be something more along the lines of every other day or three days a week. But of course, I'll let you all know with the community post as things develop. And I really appreciate everybody who's tuned in for the new series. Thank you so much and I will see you all on the next one.